Hi everyone, it's Chris from Funtech Guys, and this is a part two of the login and registration system with PHP. I'm just going to jump straight into it. We've already done the HTML and CSS, and um, we need to get cracking onto the database creation. So, if you want to just head over to localhost slash PHP my admin, oh, that's not right, slash PHP my admin. And then within it here, all we, all we want to do is create a new database. So last time, um, I don't oh, actually not last time, but in previous tutorials, what I've said I like doing is just creating a new file and just saying what I need to need to work with. So I'm going to be creating a um, a database, and the database is going to be called um, say off. Within that, we are going to create a users table. And then within that, we need um, an ID, we need a name, because we have a name here, we need a um, email, and we need a password. What I was going to do, I, I briefly mentioned it in the last tutorial, is I was going to um, do some validation on whether the user signed up or not, and we were going to, we would have used something along the lines of status. And when when I stopped the video, I actually thought, oh, as default, it doesn't come um, with email in, um, with email within um, Xamp or local hosts. So that will require another tutorial on setting that up. So what I'll do is I'll proceed with out doing the status so anyone can register and then once they've registered they are literally just a full user and then I'll probably do an extension um, a separate video on how we um, we can email the users and just make sure that once they've signed up they need to go to their email address and click you know um, a validation of some sort so I'm going to take status out for the time being but as I say that's something that we'll come back to so we need a auth database a users table and four columns so I'm just going to pull my admin back up, PHP my admin, and I'm just going to create a database, and I'm going to call this off. So I'll create that, and the name is users, and um, we need four columns. So we've got four rows here. The first one being an ID. An ID um, is an integer, and we want this a primary, uh, an auto increment, and a primary key. So if that doesn't pop up, just select primary from your drop down. From there, we want, uh, what did we say? We said name, and we want that to be a far char, and let's say 65 characters long. So the name should be no longer than 65 characters. We need a email, and again, far char, and this is, let's say, 100. Okay, there we go, 100. Um, 100 characters is quite long for, for an email, so um, I, we don't really need anything longer than that. And password, it's just password. And we're going to use Farchar, but we're going to set this to 255. There's a reason for this. I'll come back to it in a bit, but um, don't... Don't worry about it for just too much just yet, but um, there's a reason I've set it to 255. So if we go ahead and save that, click browse. We have no data, but it's been created. We have a look at the structure, but ID, which is primary key, primary key, it's auto incrementing, name, email, password. Perfect. So what we need to do now is we need to connect to our database. So I'm just going to pull up, um, I'm going to close it down because we don't need it anymore. I'm just going to pull up, well, register, let's just do it on the register page. And what we need to do first is we need to um, set the action and the method within um, our form tags. So if you want to go ahead and just set action and just leave it blank and method should be post because we want to post the data. We don't want to get it. We don't want passwords going into the, into the URL. That's um, obviously not good for security. Okay, where we've got name, let's go ahead and set this as name, name equals password here, and email address, let's do email. So we've got our three input fields, obviously um, a little further down the line we will do something like 
password and confirm password and then we'll check the two have been submitted and they match um, but as I say this is just a proof of concept to insert some data into a database so we've got yeah name password and email set up so let's just save that okay so it's acknowledged the field so I'll just do Chris test and me Obviously, it's not going to do anything at the moment because we're not handling that data at all. So let's go ahead and connect to our database. So we go open our PHP tags, and it's always best comment in your code. So I'm just going to put a connection credentials, and let's just declare some variables. So host equals localhost this will always nearly uh, this will be always the case in most instances so um there's very few times that that, that won't be the case so um, don't worry about that one for the time being um, user equals so we can get our users from here so if i just click uh, back into php my admin click on server Go to user accounts and you can just see the, the accounts that comes with PHP My Admin once you've installed it. You can create your own, um, it's just down here, but um, I'm not doing anything on the web so I'm not too concerned about having passwords and, and whatever, this is all on my local machine. So my username is root, I'm connecting to localhost and I have no password. So I'm just going to come back here, so my user is root, my pass. Is blank and my database. What did we say it was? It was off. So we've uh, we've declared our variables up here. So let's try connecting to our database. So we're going to be using um, the PDO method. So catch. There's a there's a couple of ways that we can do this. Um, I like using either PDO or um, MySQL I, but um, there's yeah personal preference. I believe PDO is a little bit more secure, but um, don't quote me on that. Um, so let's do PDO and say MySQL I. Oh, MySQL. Our host is equal to host. DB name is equal to database user. And what we want to do is we're trying to connect to this database with our credentials so we're connecting to our local host we're connected to this database with this user and this password and then if that isn't successful we want to catch the errors so what we'll do is we'll do pdo exception and we'll pass that into an into e so basically we're, we're putting the errors into um, a variable that we can handle. So let's just say die and what should we say? Connection failed. Oh, and let's just append the actual error message onto this. So get message. So what we should see, um, let's just put in a echo up here. Success. So what we should see, if if we've connected, we should see a success. Hopefully we won't see this, but if if we do see success, we'll try and break it just to make sure that it's working. So come back over here, refresh. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. Let's just submit. Okay, success. We've obviously connected to the database. I'm just going to go ahead and take that out, and let's just change this to root. Um, all I've done is just added a few more O's. Refresh and Connection failed, mofo. Access denied for user on this database. So we're obviously doing something right. It's connecting and it's all good to go. So obviously we don't want to include this, this um, all this PHP on every single file. We don't want to you know, come over here and have to paste it into here. And then if we, oh, and then if we make a change, you know, and we say, right, you know what, let's not connect to database off anymore. Let's let's change it to register. 
we have to go go through change it on every single one so it makes sense to include it onto a file and seeing this as um, header is all bit already being included on every page let's go ahead and pop it into there so I'm going to create a new file here and I'm going to call this um, dbconnect.php so within my include folder I'm just creating a dbconnect.php and I'm just going to paste all this code Let's just comment this a little bit better. So, um, if we okay. Um, so that kind of makes sense. So DP Connect, we have a new file. I'm just going to go ahead and take that off. You don't need closing PHP tags when you're um, when you're just using includes. It's personal preference. So DB Connect, and I'm just going to pop that in here. Save the register, and I'm just going to actually I'm just going to grab this file here, include once, and paste it in down here. So if I say uh, db connect, so now if you include in the assets folder, um, includes db connect on the header, we should have access to the database across every template that includes the header file. So to prove a point, I'm just going to break this and hopefully we should see a break of some sort. So yeah, there we go. So. Now we're now connected to our database and we're ready to start inserting some data. So I'm going to leave the video tutorial there and uh, call this part two. And then the next tutorial, what we'll do is we will insert data into that um, into the database we've just created. So um, I hope you've taken something away from this and catch me in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.